I wanted to do a video on presuppositional apologetics because I recently had a debate with a typical presuppositionalist, an advocate of Gordon Clark's form of presuppositional apologetics. This is the most common form you will encounter, although they are all very similar. So this can be used to counter any sort of presuppositional apologetics, but I will be specifically focusing on Clarkian presuppositionalism. The main thing that sets Clark's brand of apologetics apart from other forms of presuppositionalism is the logical proofs used to test it after the fact. It is also their rationale of why it's more philosophically sound. All apologetics seem to rely on some sort of presupposition, but this one focuses on that and even excuses it. Basically, you are just assuming the Bible and Christianity are true, and then you go from there. The first thing an advocate of presuppositionalism will do is try to say that we all have to make an assumption as a starting point. So, assuming empiricism is the same as assuming Christianity. You can point out that we also have logic, which is something they also rely on, and that empiricism is based off logic. So, while assuming Christianity is a big assumption, empiricism really isn't. With empiricism, there can be no absolutes, and it is all filtered through one's subjective point of view, but having Christian theology communicated to you requires the same subjective point of view as does knowing anything outside of your own mind. Empiricism is based on logic and is arrived at by using reason to understand how best to gather data, such as observations, for example. Whereas presupposing Christianity is based on the fallacy of presupposition, as the name would indicate. Frequently, the type of presupposition in question is one specific type called begging the question. This is where you have the same thing in your premise and conclusion, so it's circular. With Clarkian presuppositionalism, there is the addition of using logical proof after the fact. The idea can be falsified by finding logical inconsistencies. The problem with that is anything you assume that is not logically impossible will work. If it's logically impossible, it will result in inconsistencies when assumed, while anything that is not logically impossible will not result in such problems. So while they show this as proof that their presupposition is correct, all they have done is show their version of God is not logically impossible. We already know that. So you could point out to them that you could assume there are no gods, and it would be impossible to find a logical flaw with that after the fact. You could presume any silly thing you want and get the same result. That is because they are starting with a logical fallacy, so everything after that point is flawed. The fact that you can use it to prove anything after the fact, which isn't logically impossible, is a good reason why presupposition is a logical fallacy. In some instances, it can be a sophisticated way of saying, prove there is no God. You can also do this by disputing the uh, validity of the Bible. There are many ways to do that, and I have a video about Jesus that goes over some of that, but there is another way I've been thinking about lately that I haven't heard anyone mention. Frederick Bartlett did studies on memory, which he detailed in his 1932 book Remembering. One thing he did was make up a short story, and he would then tell it to various individuals and have them repeat it back to him. He would then write it down. He would come back to them at different periods of time and, and uh, have them recount it again, and he would write down each of those variations as well. What he discovered is there were differences each time a person would retell the story, 
sometimes very drastic differences. This was just one person periodically retelling a story, so that doesn't even get into the additional problem of hearing things filtered through various other people. So that's another way to counter it. So in this way, I think you should all be able to easily refute presuppositional apologetics.